this video is all about what some of the things they didn't tell you at diagnosis. And that's going to start for you right now. Things they don't tell you at diagnosis is how you feel. And I mean, it's extraordinary. If you think about it, you got to being diagnosed with MS because something happened. Maybe you had a visual disturbance. Maybe you had problems using one of your limbs, your hand, your foot. It's more likely your leg, your walking went, and people are thinking, oh, you're pissed, or I'm sure that translates, very drunk. Uh, if you're in North America, pissed, same thing. Um, not unhappy, but very drunk. Anyway, you're stumbling around, and for most of us, it happens when we're younger, looking drunk in the daytime, not a great look generally, and we're conditioned not to um, think that's a great thing. But all of a sudden, it's us. And you're thinking, oh, geez, what's happening? And usually, by the time you've got your neurology appointment, however, whether you went through A&E, or whether you went through your family doctor or your GP, um, I think something's trying to eat me, um, you end up in the hospital, then you get tested, you end up in neurology, you have MRIs, you may or may not have a lumbar puncture, which, back to things I don't tell you when you're diagnosed, can be okay and can really suck. I will cover lumbar punctures and things like this in another video, but some you it's like restaurants. You never hear about the good ones, you want to hear about the bad ones. And some lumbar punctures really suck. I don't think the people are making it up and I wouldn't have had their type of lumbar, lumbar puncture. My first lumbar puncture sucked, but I'll tell you that another time. Anyway, the main thing, the feelings. You just can't describe to other people what some of the feelings are like. Um, I, I've had MS 32-ish years now. I'm very fortunate, I suppose, if that's a relative thing. I'd rather not have it, but I've not been as badly affected. I'm, I use an exoband and poles to walk, but I do try to maintain the exercise. It's actually harder to do exercise when you've got disabilities, I'm discovering because all of a sudden my right leg's being a bit of a an arse and um, I'm using an extra band and poles and I think a fair amount of energy just goes in trying to keep me in a straight line, uh, which is tiring in and of itself. But anyway, so they don't tell you how you feel. I feel most nights like my feet are 500 degrees. I constantly say to my wife, are they hot? She says, no, but they feel to me like they're 500 degrees and I have to go to sleep with my feet outside of the sheets or duvet, um, uh, quilt, comforter, whatever you call it. And then later I find that I put them back under because obviously they weren't actually cold and they got cold because I was like sleeping with the window open. That's just me. Uh, drives my wife nuts. Um, they don't tell you how heat can affect you. I mean, today is warmish. Uh, it's overcast, it's probably about 23 degrees. For some people, that's absolutely crippling. And it's very academic, you know? I can say, well, it's been studied and I understand this and everything, until you felt it, and that awful, I feel like it's a hot, wet woolen blanket has been draped over my head and then somebody's ordered me to go and do my daily stuff, but it's like a 500 pound weight uh, it's wet, it's hot, it's humid, you're not filling them up. And you're trying to battle through because you realize that it doesn't look like it to anybody. If I broke my arm and I had a cast on, people go, oh, that guy's got a problem. He's bust his arm, he's got a cast on. You got MS, um, I, I sometimes, you know, it doesn't feel like it. I sometimes feel like somebody has taken a sharpened pencil and is driving it into my ear. It's most extraordinarily painful. That's one of my, um, that's been one of my regular things throughout my years of MS. It started probably after about five years. It comes and goes. It might not come for two months. It might come every day. It might last for 10 minutes. It might last for all day. It is not affected by taking paracetamol. I can't wear headphones. I can't wear earphones. I can't wear headphones. I've tried to get better and better ones. It's a real pain in the arse. Uh, it's very uncomfortable. I kind of just try to focus through it and tell myself it's not real. But that's practice and time. 
if you're new to MS and you're watching this, you haven't had the time. So even if you practice, it will take time. You just need to start sort of shuffling out in your head what's real. If you've broken your arm, you've got a cast on it. It's what I call real versus what's neuropathic or strange. I once wrote an article saying, um, I'd like to just go to the doctor, set their trouser leg on fire, run a couple of spiders up their arm, occasionally poke them in the air with a pencil, maybe blind them in one eye from time to time, or make them wear glasses or give them double vision or something, diplopia they call it technically, and they've got to do the whole day of consultations wearing these bloody glasses, which is, I've had this before, I'm looking at something like this out the corner of my eye, that's the only way I can get it to be two of them. Uh, even now, these glasses, if I'm not wearing them, I everything is slightly doubled, even looking straight ahead like I am to the camera, it will look vaguely doubled. So you just get all these things. Some people get bone pain. I know somebody who's getting extraordinary pain in their feet. If friend's mother, um, I said, well, try my massager. You know, it doesn't actually help her. You never know what helps. Um, it's not necessarily drugs that will help. That sucks. It would be nice to take a pill and make it go away. Like you take a um, uh, an anodin or aspirin or whatever you call it, uh, ibuprofen, paracetamol, uh, acetaminophen, um, Tylenol. You take them and either goes away or it doesn't. Or if you've possibly drunk a little too much the night before, it makes it more bearable. But it's just not the way with neuropathic pain. Um, everybody tells you to exercise. And if you're not into exercise, I was really lucky. I just did stuff because I did stuff. I didn't do stuff to do exercise. I just did stuff. I went cycling. I went climbing. I loathed running. And then I broke my femur cycling. And that has allowed me to get a pass from running for the rest of my life because I just can't do it, which is fantastic. I hate running. I will limp really quickly to the fire exit if there's an issue. Um, throwing other people behind me. Um... But they don't tell you this. They don't tell you how you feel. And then what they also, probably even more, is they don't tell you what you think. I mean, I'm, I'm 55. I'm, I'm, by my book, a reasonably old fart. I'm not as old as I, I'm probably going to get, but I was diagnosed at 23. And when I was a 23-year-old young man, I spent my life worrying about what other people thought of me. And if you don't, you don't know how lucky you are. Uh, all I can do is tell my daughter and she nods her head and says yes because she's 21 and then ignores me. I know it bugs her. It's I've got to have the latest fashion or the latest phone or you know, mostly because everybody else does it and mostly because you think other people are looking at you. And let me tell you, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're not. They've got their own anxieties. They've got their own worries. They're probably as worried as you if it's your friendship group, and let's say you're 28. They are as worried as you, and they're trying to project this lovely Instagram. I'm cool lifestyle. So bear that in mind, and my view is it's a hidden illness, which is it's hidden. So I don't expect sympathy when it's hidden. And if I'm stumbling around and I tell somebody it's because I've got MS and they don't like it or they want to think I'm drunk, that's their problem not my problem. So you got to remember, a lot of the time, if somebody wants to interpret something one way, that's their problem. Frankly, unless they're about to give you a winning lottery ticket, and you're really, really worried that you want to keep them on side, sod them. You know, you'll learn who your proper friends are. Friends for a reason, friends for a season, friends for life. Yeah? Some people won't matter. It feels like it does. It feels like they do. Um, but they won't be a part of your life forever. And frankly, if they've got a problem with your MS or your chronic illness, lucky you, because now you know. You don't want to be friends with somebody who's judging you through that lens. I don't want to be judged through that lens. Well, these days, if anyone wants to judge me, it's their problem. So don't let yourself be judged. I'm wagging my finger because I feel really strongly. You know, it, I see so many people that are, they're holding themselves back because they are worried about what they think other people think of them. Uh, I could bore on this topic. It was part of my MSc dissertation, so I really could bore on this. 
uh, I was looking at people's behavior and how it was influenced by what they thought other people thought of them. So I become an unwitting sort of, well, I wouldn't say expert, um, but I'm certainly knowledgeable about some of the psychological stuff and it doesn't matter. You know, so you will stumble around, you will be tired, you will have to cancel plans. You'll just say, excuse my language, I'm not doing this. You know, I can't, you know, the fatigue will hit you at the weirdest times. So today, the time now has got to be about midday. Uh, I woke up at 6.30. Hey, get on with the day and everything. Oh, I'm really quite tired. Shut my eyes. 10 past nine. 10 past nine. I slept for another two hours and 40 minutes. Just like that. I woke up, heard the radio and thought, this is odd. It's normally news and this is the same thing going on. And that must be a program. And bloody hell, what's the time? So this happens. <clears throat> I don't beat myself up about it. I used to, but it's out of your control and it's healthier for me. And then I felt better and I thought, sod this, I'm gonna go do my walk, which I do less now, which is annoying because as the MS sort of gets into you, uh, should we say, it makes it harder to do it. So it's, I have to be quite, I have to be more bloody minded with myself and I have to get everything out and I have to really focus on it and I can't turn on my computer or edit a video or start doing something like that because 10 minutes will go by and then an hour will go by then I'll think sod this I'm not in the mood so I wanted to make this video for you guys I'm going to make some more I'm going to talk about things uh, more specifically like drugs and long-term outcomes and things they never discuss at diagnosis please support me on patreon I am not supported by anybody other than other patients. I don't take pharmaceutical company money for the channel. Frankly, if some of them offer me something for some private consulting, maybe, but that's not gonna be something on the channel. This content is about me being a patient and you being a patient. And if you can support me on Patreon, which I will put up again, not sure which side it's gonna come up, I'll do that. Subscribe to the channel, keep watching the videos, and comment on things ask me questions i'm happy to help where i can all right you guys take care thanks very much for taking the time to watch bye bye